Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Before we go into today's broadcast, can we call forth our daily bread? Are you ready? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Release your faith in agreement with me now and expect a miracle. Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It is coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Great things are happening in your life. There is supply coming your way. Praise God. Listen, don't use the economic situation of your environment to judge your life. God is bigger than that situation. God is bigger than your country. God is bigger than any government. God is bigger than any government policy. When it comes to your needs being met, God doesn't joke with it. He doesn't. It's his responsibility and he knows it is his responsibility. So whenever we, we make this demand, there's a reason we're making it. Jesus said we should do it. But beyond that, we've gone beyond obeying him simply because he said it to understand the reason behind it. Praise God. Yeah. So we know the reason behind it. It is God's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So Jesus said, it is, see, he created you into this world. He, he brought you forth into this world. See? And then when you got born again, you came in. See, the Bible says, as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God. So you especially that is born again, you are double sure that you are a child of God. And because you're a child of God, you are God's responsibility. Believe me. And God knows what to do. He knows how to get across to you. You're the one worrying yourself. You're the one troubling yourself. Can you just permit the Lord to gain access to helping you? Simply by submitting to him. Simply by obeying his instruction. He says, give us this day our daily bread. Jesus said, pray like that. So whether you have or you don't have, there is daily bread to receive from the Lord. And it's your place to acknowledge that truth. And in acknowledgement, you make the request. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Praise God. We've been talking about when the rain comes. And taking a... Uh, same scripture from Isaiah chapter 32. Isaiah the prophet was prophesying here and he was saying several things but then he got to verse 15 where he said, Until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high and the wilderness be a fruitful field and the fruitful field be counted for a forest. This will not happen until the Spirit be poured from poured upon us from on high. Now, in preparing for this rain, in preparing for the Spirit to be poured out on your life, what are you going to do with the anointing of God's Spirit? What is your plan? What is your expectations? You know, I was sharing with you yesterday about Solomon. When Solomon had a dream and in that dream, the Lord asked him, ask anything you want and I'll give it to you. And Solomon, this was in a dream. So it's not like he, he had full control of it, but I want to show you something from this. So he said, give me an understanding heart so that I'll be able to rule these people well, now that's what Solomon asked from the Lord in a dream. Now, how come in a dream, Solomon was able to ask for something like that? And you know that when you're dreaming, 
you you don't really have control you know that's how a lot of people think you don't have control over what you say but i'll tell you the truth your dreams reflect the true state of your soul yeah your response especially your response is in a dream now you you may dream about something there are times you dream dreams that are detached from you so you just see something happening you had no control you had nothing to do with it you just see it happening now those are the kind of dreams but the kind of dreams that you respond to maybe something happened in a dream and you did something your response in that dream reveals the true state of your soul i didn't say your spirit i said your soul so no matter what you brag everybody feels you are one great person when you have dreams and you have to respond in that dream it shows you the truth about when i mean the truth the states not god's truth now the states of your soul so you with that you can know if i need to work some more on myself or i'm fine of course we we all keep developing and keep growing but you know what i mean by that if something is really wrong see so you have a dream and in the dream um you know you know all those dreams eh? they were chasing me and i kept running and running and running and running and you woke up from that uh, running state and you're panting it simply shows you're weak your soul is weak you see in a dream someone successfully defrauded you you're weak there are no two ways about it it's not it's not just you, know, you wake up from that kind of father it cannot happen it cannot happen in jesus name. it's not it cannot happen in jesus name you are being shown how to take charge of your soul so it's not about praying now it's about stepping up in your development growing your smartness growing your accuracy in reasoning those things are work you need to do on yourself so now you see solomon he had this dream and god asked him tell me anything you want ask and he said give me an understanding how now how did solomon get to that point where he was able to smartly ask god for such a thing because god was really really pleased now solomon asked that because his father had spent time training him right it's as simple as that his father prepared him. I call this Gibariatapash. His father, David, remember Solomon was the son of David. His father, of course, when I say his father, his mother also, because he spent more time with his mother. His parents, maybe that's the right word to use, praise God. His parents had spent time to train and teach him that wisdom is the principal thing now when you read the book of proverbs i've said this many times on this broadcast it, when you read the book of proverbs proverbs chapter one up to chapter nine i think are the words of david they are not the words of solomon proverbs chapter one to verse nine those were the notes solomon was sharing from the things his father taught him now his father had taken the time to sound in that this is how you train children sometimes as parents we want to teach our children everything you no know, act like this do like this see it's important we teach our children what makes us tick as parents as christian parents many times we want to teach our children um so we want to make sure they're always reading the bible we want to make sure they pray we want to make sure you know now i learned this you know i i believe it's from the lord now why i say i believe it's from the lord? it's not like the lord sat me down and say let me teach you something but you see the there are wisdom that comes to you and you just know that this wisdom is coming from a place of culture see for example um as there are there are certain tribes you will come from you may not remember teaching your children how to go on their knees to greet people you may not remember doing it yourself but then you just one day realize that that's how your children greet 
Now I see what happened. That wisdom came from the place of culture. See, so you are you are baptized in that you yourself. So unconsciously you greet that way. So your children watching you unconsciously begin to follow the path. So there are trainings we receive from culture. Okay. Now, as a child of God, we have a different culture. And, and that culture is laced in the Spirit of God. So as you walk with the Spirit of God in truth, there are certain wisdom you develop. So in your expressor, in your expression or your expressing things, you bring things from that culture. You see that now? So this wisdom came from me. Like I said, it came from the culture. It's not because I can remember. There are, there are things I remember the Holy Spirit. So, so, and so did the Holy Spirit told me this. But there are things you don't remember that he told you expressly. But you just know that this thing came from my fellowshipping with him. You, you get what I'm talking about? Now, so, it, it, it came to me and said, don't just raise your children to read Bible. Don't just read your children to pray. Raise your children to know and understand Jesus. Raise them to have a relationship with Jesus. Because you see, if they have a relationship with Jesus, not as make Jesus real to them. And how do you make Jesus real to them? It's not by telling them, serve Jesus, give your life to Jesus. No. Let them see it in your life that Jesus is real to you. Let them see. Before they understand any scripture, before they understand the acts of or the, 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 the culture of Christianity, let them see the reality of a man walking with Jesus. Let them hear it in your words. Let them see it in your actions. So that came to me strongly. And I, I began to reorganize the method we use in, in, in raising our children. Consciously, I began to reorganize it. See, they will grow up to read the Bible. They will grow up to pray. But before they begin to get into those things consciously, the first thing they must get is that Jesus is real. And they must see it in their parents. Now, David successfully, or Solomon's parents, like I said earlier, successfully trained Solomon to understand that wisdom is the principal thing. See? So it says, in all your getting. Now, now, see, that's how it was communicated to him, because that's how he wrote it. He says, get wisdom, get understanding. Don't forsake it. Because wisdom is the principal thing. Then he says, in all your getting, get understanding. So Solomon had spent a long time meditating on what this thing is wisdom and understanding he spends his time wondering and he knew that he had been taught that wisdom comes from god meaning only god gives wisdom only god gives understanding he has been taught so he knew in his mind the day i meet god this is what I'm going to get from him. This is the thing he gives. So this is what I'm going to get from him. So that was what was in his mind. So even though it was a dream, you know, because that's the truth. There are times God visits you in the dream and you think it's not real. You think it's just a dream. It's, it's more real than him physically stepping into your living room. Yes, because when God visits you in, 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 in the realm of dreams, He's visiting your real self. 
Now, people who, has, who have had experiences where they, they met Jesus, now, they were not sleeping, it wasn't a vision. Maybe you're sitting in your room and Jesus walks in, he does that. You will realize this thing. See, Jesus comes with so much glory that I can tell you this. Imagine you were sick. Maybe you had some pain in your body, some real pain in your body that makes you uncomfortable. And here you are just doing your thing, praying, worshiping, or whatever you are doing. And you feel the presence of God walk into your room. Wow. Now, now there are times you will feel him coming. There are times you will just turn and he's there. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> but there are times you, you will know he's coming. Now, here is the point. When he comes and you begin to interface with, there are times he would visit, he would just say what he wants to say and you have no, no, no place to respond. And then there are times you would be given the opportunity to respond. Guess what's going to happen to you? You're not going to remember that you have a pain. Now, this is Jesus, the healer. You understand what I'm saying? He would, he would leave you. I mean, this is Jesus. But then, he would walk away. And you will not remember that I had a pain. I could have told him to heal me. Now, after he leaves, you remember. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Ah, Lord, Lord, I wish you can come back. This pain. Can I tell you the truth? Even if you're there, say, I wish you can come back this way. If he turns around and comes back, you will still forget the pain. You know why? I'll tell you why. When Jesus comes to you, he's not dealing with your flesh. I'm telling you, you may have so many needs. You may even be talking about your needs before he comes. You may just be going, oh God, I can't pay my rent. Oh God, I can't do this, I can't do that. You might be to crying all that cry. And then Jesus walks in. When Jesus walks in, guess what happens? He interfaces with your mind. So you see, the state of your mind comes alive. Now, if there was truth inside you, even though you don't live the truth, you understand what I'm saying? For example, if you know the truth about healing, right? Even though you are sick in your body, because sometimes we're too lazy to carry out what we believe. I'm telling you the truth. It's laziness. So you know the truth inside you, but you can't take the discipline to bring forth that truth and get results in your body, okay? In terms of healing. And Jesus walks in. He's not going to communicate with you about that pain because the truth is it doesn't exist. I'm telling you the truth. It doesn't exist. That's number one. Number two, now you see your mindset. He leaves. You remember. Now, now a simple thing. Almost every preacher would have experienced this. You are going to preach. And you're going to preach in one hour, for example. And here you are struggling with a pain in your body. It might be pain in your tummy and you are on the bed wriggling like, I, can I preach? I doubt if I can preach. Ah, this is so painful. God help me. God help me. Ha, ah, it's time to go. You gather yourself and you go there. You're like, God, I'm so uncomfortable. Lord, I'm so uncomfortable. And you're just waiting. And then it's, they call you up. It's time. And then you get up. Now, when you get up, you may be feeling that pain. But the moment you get up that platform and you begin to speak, the pain vanishes. Now, you, you understand what I'm... If you, if this, if, I mean, if you're a preacher, you would have experienced this before. The pain vanishes. Sometimes you're just weak in your body. You're so tired. 
But then the moment you stand, everything vanishes. Woo, glory. Now you preach and preach. You might even preach for the next three hours. You feel nothing. And then after that whole preaching, you come back, sit down, or get back home. Suddenly that pain comes. I mean, it comes like <laughs> three times what it was before. Like, yeah, God. And sometimes I begin to interpret it. So Satan wants to kill me because of the message I preached today. No, sir. No. See, now we say you, you came under the anointing. And because you came under the anointing, the anointing swallowed everything about you. So that pain was swallowed up. So what now happened afterwards? So you came out of the anointing and then that pain. Now, the truth is, that's to let you know that that pain doesn't exist in your soul. So because the pain doesn't exist in your soul, it's so simple or so easy to deal with with that pain or whatever it is <laughs> i'm teaching you how to prepare for the rain <laughs> praise god oh thank you jesus because my time is up today i'm going to continue on this tomorrow god bless you bye